we'll start with an opening statement from Coach O'Connor. Yeah, my, uh, thank you. Um, the first thing I want to say is um, I want to congratulate uh, the Duke team on a tremendous season. They've got a great team. And, um, you know, they've got a great program, and their day in Omaha is coming. I think sometimes uh, your first time when you go there, I said the same thing about East Carolina last weekend. Uh, the first time, a lot of times it happens when you least expect it. And, uh, you know, Duke's got a tremendous coach and Coach Pollard and a great staff and great players. And I just first want to congratulate them on a, a great season. Getting to Omaha is very, very difficult to do. Uh, it takes a lot of things. Uh, it takes a lot more than just talent. And that's why I'm so proud of these players that wear our uniform. Um, you know, to lose game one on Friday afternoon, the way we lost it, having a lead late in the game and not being able to hold it, it's credit to Duke. But I think it says more about the character and the determination and competitive spirit of this team. And every team is different. Um, we're grateful that this is the sixth time we've had a chance to play in o Omaha and a chance to compete for the national championship. And this team is certainly uh, special in its own way. Um, to see what Brian Edgington did today, um, that's what this is about. It's about giving them an opportunity to wear this uniform, an opportunity to compete, an opportunity for them to shine and rise up at the biggest moments on the biggest stage. And, you know, our team as a whole did that today. The offensive output was very, very impressive and very determined. Uh, certainly Griff O'Farrell had a tremendous day, as did other guys. But uh, Brian Edgington was spectacular. Um, to say a little bit about who he is, when I got a chance after the celebration to hug him, the first thing out of his mouth was thanking me for the opportunity for him to come here. And that gratefulness um, will serve him well uh, for the rest of his life. And I know he really values the opportunity that he's had here, and he has absolutely made the most of it. And, um, you know, I don't know what day we play, uh, but we're looking forward to regrouping this week and getting ready to go out there and put ourselves in a position to have a chance to win a national championship. Thanks, Coach. We'll take the players. questions for the players now. We'll start with Pete. Brian, can you just take us through your start today and kind of the thought process there? What was looking for you? And was there anything in the thought process that made you think you'd be able to go the distance and kind of have you go to the stakes so loud? Um, I mean, I think you always dream about going the complete game, but usually it very rarely happens. Um, I mean, I had my, my splitter working today, which was, was typically using my best pitch, so having that was good. But I mean, I just kind of stuck to the game plan, attacking hitters. Um, and obviously, like, we have a great offense, so just doing my part to just throw up zeros or, or ones and just keep us in the game. Jeff. Brian, what was it like to be out there in the ninth inning to get the, you know, it was awesome. Uh, after that eighth inning, I was really hoping they weren't going to say I was done because I was going to tell them I was going back out no matter what. But I'm just happy that they gave me the opportunity to uh, try and finish the game. Like Brian, Coach just referenced the, the fact that you get the chance to, to pitch here. And, um, I imagine these last two games were the two biggest of your career. Mm -hmm. um, what was your kind of mindset going into this postseason? What did it mean to have an opportunity to pitch a game like this? And uh, how did you handle all that? Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I've never experienced something like this before. So I just kind of taking deep breaths and just stay in the moment. But I mean, we have a great team, great offense. Um, I knew that we had a great chance coming into last weekend as well as this weekend of taking care of business. I mean, Duke's a great team. But I mean, I knew at the end of the day, if we do what we could do, I knew that we had, would have a great chance of, of winning. Brian, how were you able to reset after the regular season to put together the two performances you've had in the last two weeks? Uh, I mean, I thought I was trending pretty well um, at, the end of the, at the end of the year. I know the results may not show it, but I felt good in, in my stuff and how I was feeling. But I mean, the postseason doesn't really, I don't care less how I pitch. As long as we win at the end of the day, that's all I care about.
Take care of the field and check for Correct. Each of the last two days, Duke put up corporate numbers. You guys immediately responded with big names. How important is that counter punch for you guys? Yeah, it's huge. Um, I think one thing that I realized a lot this year is how uh, playoff baseball is so momentum driven, um, especially in front of a crowd like this. So when we uh, got punched, uh, being able to punch right back in the next opportunity that we had at the plate, just really like even the playing field back up and got this crowd back into it. Um, so our ability to create havoc right away after going down is, I think, what kept us ahead in all of these games. Jeff. And I kind of follow on that before Duke punched back in, in each of the last two games, you guys jumped out to an early lead. Mm -hmm. Playing at home with the energy here, how, how big is that to make the opponent play from behind and have to fight back? Yeah, I mean, I've never felt um, the energy like that uh, than this weekend, um, especially having the opportunity to be the away team at home yesterday, kind of start offensively was a different feel, but when that crowd got going, uh, when we started creating havoc in the first inning, I mean, it just, it gets that, you get that feeling that it's going to be a good day. Just that crowd was incredible all weekend. Gene, then check it. what's kind of going your mind and your teammates' mind when you see Brian dealing the way it was today? It's huge. I mean, anytime um, we can get a guy posting zeros, our offense is, is very uh, focused and driven. Uh, and anytime we get a guy like Brian, uh, or, you know, Connolly did great, Nick Parker did great. Whenever we get guys posting zeros, it usually gives our offense opportunities to score some runs. Okay, Chuck. Brian, can you just walk us through that final out? Uh, you turn, uh, it didn't seem like Kyle gave you much chance to, to react <laughs> once you saw him coming. Um, I mean, I knew it was coming, so I just kind of had a brace for it. <laughs> but I was just hoping that I could turn around before he got there, which I was able to. But, I mean, that was an awesome feeling. Take one back, Preston. Yeah, well, I was at summer ball watching um, that team play in Omaha, which was really cool, you know, going into my freshman year playing here, uh, seeing where they had made it, just being excited about going to a program like that. Um, you know, now looking back at that and knowing that people are going to be in my shoes watching us play, it's, it's like a, it's a cool full circle moment because um, I was tuned into all those games. So. Uh, Mike Taylor, College Baseball Central. Uh, you guys go down 1-0 in the series. Uh, how important was the experience and leadership from, from Kyle Taylor and Jake Gallop to, to keep the, the tone and everything? Great bunch of teams that one. Um, they've been incredible all year. I mean, hitting in front of them has been uh, – a blessing. Uh, I feel like every time I'm on, they get me in somehow. Um, just watching them work and picking their brains offensively, defensively. I've talked to Kyle and Jake just about the playoff atmosphere, what to expect. You know, I, I talk to them, I pick their brains about everything, and having them on our side has been unbelievable for sure. Ruth, knowing those guys who come behind you, what's your approach in the first inning? Uh, I think you have 27 hits now in the first inning. What's kind of the, how do you kind of go about it? Do you attack it any different than your other events? Um, not really. I don't, I don't think I attack it differently. I mean, obviously, we want, we want to be aggressive as an offense. So I'm, I, oh, I don't want the pitcher to be comfortable right away. So I think you know, our, our motto is to be aggressive right away. Um, obviously, I'm not trying to do too much because I know in the first inning, if I get on with those I mean, all eight guys coming behind me, we are going to be in business. So I'm not sure anything changes, but I definitely um, have, you know, more of a incentive, excitement to get on right away. Preston, then Mike. Yeah, Brian, just looking at your path in college, unconventional to say the least, just could, were there times when you just kind of didn't think something like this would happen and you wouldn't reach these kind of levels of college baseball? Um, I mean, I always had inner confidence in myself, but... Um, I do think if you would have told me my freshman year that I ended up doing six years and I'd end up my last one here, I'd probably tell you were lying. But I mean, I don't, it's, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be here. Brian, you came out after five perfect innings against Army, then a long wait to pitch again. Um, how did you handle that kind of mentally, emotionally, like waiting to get your next shot? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, Connolly and Nick Parker are great pitchers, and sometimes it's just 
hard to pitch over them, but ultimately I'm just ready whenever my number's called, whether that's starting, coming out of the bullpen, doesn't matter. I'll take one more for the players. Brian, you three guys, uh, the three transfer pitchers, you guys got a nickname or something? I don't know. Uh, the three I mean, like we, I mean, like, we live in U Heights, so, like, I guess, like, we call, our, we call ourselves, like, the U Crew. But, like, <laughs> other than that, like, not really. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. You can stick around or you can head back to the clubhouse. Uh, we'll take questions. Yeah, you can stay if you want. Jeff, it's up to you. David, and then Mike. You want to go be with those guys. It's, fine. it's up to you. I'll stay. Brian, this for you and Matt, this will be trip number six to Omaha for mm -hmm. a good number of your players. This will be the first time out there. What does it mean for you, for them to be able to experience this? Um, well, like, like I said yesterday, that you know every player decides to make a commitment to Virginia for multiple reasons, and one of them is to have a chance to play on the biggest stage in college baseball in Omaha, Nebraska. And if you're a fan of college baseball, you or a player, you grow up um, seeing games played in that stadium and seeing teams compete for a national championship. And, you know, I, although this is our sixth appearance, this is their appearance. You know, I said it last weekend, you know, the, this baseball program is here for these players to wear this uniform and compete for a championship. It's not for us as coaches. Um, we get to enjoy it because of the work that they deliver and their performance. So I'm just so excited for every one of them to have an opportunity to walk in that stadium um, and compete for an opportunity to win a national championship. And um, I'm just proud of them. David. Brian, several guards today was kind of an image of yesterday. said yesterday you thought that was the biggest turn. Was today's similar? What did you say about your Well, there's no question. Um, our ability to respond, um, you know, be resilient and, you know, not sit around and feel sorry for ourselves is a great quality to have. Uh, resiliency is a incredible quality for any of us to have in life, you know, because, uh, uh, this game is a small microcosm of life, you know, uh, life deals us all difficult blows at times and challenges and what an opportunity for these young men to wear this uniform at any school, not just Virginia, to learn how to bounce back and handle adversity. And when you do it and respond like we have the last two days coming after losing game one is I told them in the huddle after it's a, it's a special quality that they have learned that will be an asset for them for the rest of their, their life, not only the rest of the season, the rest of their career, but, but in life. And um, that's one of the many great things about the sport of baseball. Brian, um, in terms of Edge's outing and also just what you got from him this season, yeah. um, what you expected in both cases, a lot more than you expected, how would you? Well, you know, we, we recruited him for a reason, Coach Dickinson, you know, um, saw some really great things in him. Um, Edge's previous pitching coach is a longtime friend of our coaching staff at Elon. And uh, Coach Jerry Oaks couldn't have recommended him any higher um, when he knew that he was going to go do a graduate year. Um, Jerry called us and said, you have to take this kid, right? And um, so I'm just feel fortunate that we decided to offer him opportunity and he took us up on it. You know, uh, he's a winner. He wants the ball at the biggest times and he's continued to deliver for us all year long. David and then Preston and then David. Brian, you, you also mentioned yesterday the national search you undertook for a pitching coach mm -hmm. several years ago. Yeah. How, how did that search evolve? Did you know of Drew before you even started the search? Yeah. How did you Upon. Yeah, I, I mean, I was aware of him before the search started. You know, uh, I think any good coach or administrator, you know, keeps a list of people and keeps updating that in case something happens with your staff. You know, um, that's what good leaders do. And, 
And so there, there was a list that I, that I continued to keep if that moment happened at some time. And um, Drew was on that. And I had, candidly, I'd heard a lot from professional scouts in the Midwest of the job that he did at Illinois developing pitchers, not only for them to end up being high draft picks, but also, most importantly, getting the most out of his pitching staff. And it was just a matter of getting in front of him and uh, meeting him and getting a real understanding of what is what he's what he's about and what he teaches and the way he goes about it and um, it was an exhaust exhaustive search talked to a number of guys in college baseball but also a lot of guys in pro ball and settled that you know felt like drew was the right one to take us forward when that change happened and he has done a uh, terrific job like I said yesterday his greatest quality is getting the most out of each and every guy and you know, maybe making them a little bit better. Preston and Nina. Yeah, Coach, you talked about before this game on it that you all have lost coming off the last season and then kind of the work that you and Coach Dickinson had to put into yeah. defining the guys to fill in that staff. Yeah. It, what was that like? Was it stressful at the time? Is it gratifying now to kind of look back? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's very gratifying to look back and see where we were at at the end of the year last year and all the guys that went into professional baseball that we needed to replace on the mound. And um, you knew we had a very talented uh, freshman class coming in, and those guys have done a terrific job all year long. They haven't been showcased much the last two weekends, but we got some really talented arms in that freshman class that will help secure our success in the future. Uh, but, you know, you go into the fall and you see the, these new guys pitch and compete along with the first years and knowing you got guys like Jay Wolfolk back and Jake Berry and, and others. And, um, you know, we just kept looking at guys in different roles and trying to piece it together to try to figure out what was our best opportunity to be consistent from a pitching staff standpoint. And we, you know, when you have that new, that many new arms, you have to make it open competition, which we did. And, um, you know, the guys that started for us won the jobs. David. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk the last two weeks about what this place has been like and kind of that energy being back. Like, yeah. these guys will come in here and they'll talk about never playing in a place like that before. What's it been like from your perspective? Because, again, it's new to them just seeing them get that opportunity and so all that. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm just th so thankful for our community. They have always, um, supported our baseball program for a number of years. And, you know, one of the many things that I'm proud of is how it's just gradually year after year gotten better over 20 years. And the investment that has been made in this place to make it the best possible experience uh, for the fans uh, to come and cheer our team on, which then leads to the players having the best possible experience. And so there's been so much that's went into that Certainly winning is the number one thing. If you want people to come watch you play, you better win, right? And we've uh, done a pretty good job of that over the years. And then, and then it takes resources. You know, it takes the, the people that decided to make an investment in this baseball program, you know, every year right, right along over those 20 years. And, um, you know, the, one of the many things I'm proud of is every year this stadium continues to get better, not only for the player development area. You know, we expanded our weight room 2,000 square feet this winter, and, you know, Chris Taylor and another gentleman in our community were integral in that happening. And those things don't just happen. You need people to step up and make them happen. And then, you know, what's been done for the fans to have a great experience here. Yeah, uh, their legacy is they're, they're just fierce competitors and warriors and ready to play every day. They're, 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 they're roommates. They came here as roommates and they've lived together. Um, you know, they're, they're both, they're different. They're, they're very, very competitive, but they're um, different in a number of ways. Um, Jake Geloff is very, very prepared. He puts his work in. He rises up in big occasions and and Kyle Teal is just, I gotta tell you, I've never been around a player like him. And I say that, that 
we've been we've had a lot of talented players, but nobody, nobody that I have ever coached has a fun, loving spirit like Kyle Teal. I mean, if you pay attention to the game, the smile on this guy's face, even when he lines out to the second baseman, he's laughing, he's got a smile on his face. He plays the game like a 13-year-old boy, um, and I love it. It is so fun to be around, and I'm just thankful that we have another opportunity to have those guys in a, you know, competing for us. Jermaine, Mike, and Jeff. Coach, congratulations on uh, your sixth trip to Omaha. What's Thank the you. biggest thing, I know you talk about, especially as you go out there, what's yeah. the biggest thing you're looking forward to heading back out there for the sixth time? Um, well, the first thing I'm looking for, uh, forward to is Ed Scott uh, signing the the visa bill when we have a team dinner at Sullivan's. That's our annual thing. We rent the basement of Sullivan's and have a nice uh, uh, dinner there every time that we've went. No, just kidding. Um, you know, uh, listen, you know, a lot of teams, Omaha's the goal, right? A lot of teams have it on their hats. They have T-shirts. They say it in a huddle. Um, certainly that's a goal of ours, but, you know, I've learned over our trips there that it, you, you're not satisfied with just being in Omaha, right? It's about an opportunity to compete, eight teams competing for a national championship. And that's what these guys' focus will be when we go out there. Um, I am looking forward to seeing my mom. Um, this will be the, the, the first time that I've either played in that event or coached in the event that my father hasn't been there. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing my mom and giving her a big kiss. And, um, you know, just excited about that. Mike, Brian mentioned uh, Drew Edge. Uh, as you're getting into the seventh inning, the eighth inning, what are the discussions about him going back out there? Uh, was there any debate? Did you know you were sending him back out? We knew we were going to send him back out. I mean, he was very, very efficient. He was in control of the game. I think he had one walk in nine innings. And, um, you know, they just had a hard time figuring out his split or, you know, mixed in with his fastball that was up to 92, 93 miles an hour. And he just, you know, sometimes the best thing is just to leave the guy out there. I think sometimes as coaches we can outthink it. Let's match up here, match up there. But when you throw like he's, you're pitching like he was pitching, the best thing is send him back out there, right? Uh, sometimes change, you know, is, is, is not the best thing from that standpoint. And he had enough pitches in him, and uh, he was uh, determined to do everything he could to, to finish the ball game. Time for two more, Jeff and David. This, uh, to follow up on Damon's question, this ballpark is named for Les Disharoon and his wife. You Patch on the jersey. You yeah. thought amid all this craziness this weekend about how much he would have enjoyed this scene. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, um, you know, I saw his grandson after the game, his great grandson. Um, you know, Les Disharoon, I've said it before, he's like a second father to me. You know, uh, for 20 years um, during the season, most every Monday we had lunch. Um, or he'd call if he couldn't have lunch, and you know um, he was in the, his his luxury box for every game we played in this stadium, and so um, you know he he loved these kids, you know he loved um, supporting them, and certainly made a huge huge impact on our baseball program. And I know he's up there, you know, smiling down on this team right now, and uh, very very proud. David, take us off. Yeah, if I could just go back to the players, guys. You just saw Coach get a little emotional talking about his dad. What does he share about his dad with you guys? Um, I would say not too much. No. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we've had that many conversations about it, honestly. We really haven't talked about it, yeah. you know. Um, I was gone a little bit in the fall, you know, because of my father. And, you know, when my father passed, I was, you know, away for about 10 days. But um, never really 
uh, uh, talked about it, you know, with the team, um, other than in one occasion about, you know, the importance of family. You know, I talked about it after the game today that, you know, they they all have family members, parents that are here watching this this weekend, and whenever we're done and wrapped up today, you know, go spend time with them and tell them how much you love them, you know, um, because they wouldn't be where they're at right now without that support. Yeah, I will, I will say um, about that, <clears throat> after uh, Coach returned to uh, practice um, and he gave us that, that speech, I remember when me and my roommates got back to our apartment, we, we talked about it and it just puts things in a, in a perspective that uh, people our age don't, don't think about too much, too often, um, probably for a good thing. But when things like that happen, obviously, um, you should take a step back and that speech that coach gave us, um, even though that's pretty much the extent of what we've talked about with his dad, um, really left an impact on everyone. Thanks, John. Thank you. See you all in Omaha. Brock, welcome to that dinner.